Okay, so if you're an algebra student, you're going to be able to understand this basic calculus problem. Now, calculus, you know, this is what we're looking at right here. You know, looking, you know, if you haven't taken it, it is pretty intimidating. You're like, well, what is this stuff? Well, I'm going to explain exactly what this is and why it really comes directly from our knowledge of algebra. So if you are like a ninth grade algebra student, um, you know, basic algebra one or any algebra um, course out there, maybe with the exception of pre-algebra, but even pre-algebra, you're going to have some, you're going to learn some of the things in pre-algebra that are going to apply here as well. So this video is going to make a, uh, the connection of how important algebra is in calculus. And again, you're going to be able to um, understand um, a calculus problem here. Very, very important one at that. So I'm going to get into exactly how this works and hopefully you'll find this interesting. You're certainly going to learn something about the importance of algebra in calculus and why it's so important to master algebra. Okay, so I'm going to get to, into all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. My specialty is middle school math, high school math, and some college level math. So I have courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're having a tough time with any uh, course in this level, um, I can help you out. Now, if you're taking an exam and it has math on it, so like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, you get the idea. Any exam, I can help you prepare for the math section. If you homeschool, I have a great homeschool math program. And if you need math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. Now, hopefully you do not need uh, math notes because you should be taking outstanding math notes right now. And if you're not, I'm going to tell you after decades of teaching mathematics, you're really putting yourself at risk of not doing well. Okay, If you want to be great at math, you have to take great math notes. Okay, so let's get into this problem. Now, this thing right here um, is something called the difference quotient, okay, the difference quotient and calculus. And this little notation here is something called, um, it's a notation for the first derivative of a function. Now, I'm already using some big fancy words, but I'm going to explain what this all means right now. So if you're just curious what this is, this is the formula, okay, the difference quotient, which helps us, uh, well, well, it uh, uh, allows us to calculate the first derivative of a function, but we don't even know what that means. Okay, well, I'm going to explain this right now. All right, so hopefully uh, along your journeys in Algebra 1, you've studied this. If you haven't studied this uh, so far, you will be. Okay, but let's take a look at what's going on here. All right, so you can see I have this yellow graph. This happens to be the graph of this function right here. This is the function of a parabola. So f of x is equal to 7x squared. So this would be like a basic sketch of it. Now, what I have is a line, okay? And then this line right here, it's just touching this parabola at this point right there, okay? We call this a tangent line. And so imagine a line that just was just bouncing right off that parabola at this point. Now, this point happens to be where x is equal to 2. So this is some x, y point right there. When x is 2, that's the point this particular line is touching the parabola. And I want to know what is the slope of this line, this specific line, this, and we call this again the, a tangent line. What is the slope of it? Okay. Now remember the slope, m, is the rise over the run. Hopefully you, you've studied this. You certainly uh, should have um, you know, study this even in pre-algebra, okay, so we're talking about the slope of a line, but even more precisely, we have a slope formula. So the rise is when we subtract the y's, right, so like y2 minus y1, and the run is when we subtract the x's when we're giving, uh, when we're given two points, okay, so if I got a point right here, it's, uh, let me highlight right here, if I have a point on the graph right there and the point on the graph right there, I can actually calculate the slope, right? So I got a point there, point there. I can find the slope of this line. So hopefully this is um, somewhat familiar uh, to you. Now, this formula right here, okay, about the difference quotient is really nothing more than calculating the slope. This is just like how we uh, find the slope in algebra 
we have two points, one right there and one right there. So this would be like a point X, Y, and this would be another point over here, okay, uh, X plus H, Y, okay, and we are going to calculate the slope, and that's what this is called. It's called the difference quotient because we're going to be finding the difference in a quotient. We're talking about division here, okay, but really, it's nothing more than finding the slope between two points in algebra. This is effectively what we're doing. Now, for me to fully explain this formula, would we, um, that would be a different uh, video. But effectively, you can kind of, you know, just get a basic sense of what's going on here. All right, so the objective, let's bring this in now. The objective is to find the slope of this line. Now, in calculus, okay, we have this thing called the derivative. It is very, very cool and very, very powerful. So we have this function, f of x. Remember, f of x just describes this particular graph. If we can find this thing, f prime of x, that's how we say that, f prime of x. There's other notations for it as well, tx, dy. Uh, but this is one here, f prime of x is pretty common. This is the first derivative. And the first derivative is a formula for the slope. Okay, so I want to know the slope anywhere along this function, what m is, m here or m there, m there, doesn't make a difference, m right there, m right there. I want to know the formula or the precise slope. Well, I need a formula for the slope for this particular function. So that's what we're going to try to do. Okay, we're going to calculate this first derivative, and then I can answer this specific question right there. So that's the objective of what we're going to be doing. And I, um, uh, I'm going to actually show you an easy way to do this, and then we're going to apply this difference uh, quotient formula and use our algebra skills to figure out the same answer. So let's get going. And here it is. So here is our uh, function. f of x is equal to 7x squared. Okay. Now I'm telling you right off the bat that the answer here, the first derivative, okay, is 14x. You're like, what? We we're done? Well, not quite, but let me show, explain this to you. This is so, so easy. Believe me when I tell you, uh, calculus, you can handle calculus. Now, you're going to need to, you know, really be strong in algebra, but let's see how this is done. Okay, this, this formula that I showed you, this difference quotient formula, is like the long way. It's not the practical way of uh, calculating the first derivative. So in this particular case, finding the first derivative of a function is super easy. Okay, all we're going to do is take that little 2 right here and multiply by 7. So 2 times 7, that's 14. And then whatever this power is, x squared, we're going to take that exponent 2 and subtract 1. You always subtract 1, and we're left with 1. That becomes the new power. So this is 14 to the x to the first, and you are done. That's basically all you have to do. Now there's other uh, functions and other kind of situations where you have to apply different type of rules to find the first derivative, but you can see that this is not that difficult. All right, so this is the first derivative of this function, this parabola. Okay, so but what does that mean? Okay, well, it means that if you want to find the slope anywhere along this um, parabola, okay, all I'm going to use is this uh, formula for the slope 14x. Okay, so 14x here, 14x there. So remember, our line is like right here. Okay, so it, our line is when x is equal to 2. All right, so... When we want to find the slope, when x is 2, all right, so I'm just going to plug a 2 in. I'm going to replace that x with 2, so 14 times 2 is 28, and that is it. Okay, what does that mean? Well, let me just show you this right here. So it means the slope is 28 or 28 over 1, right? That's the rise over the 1 run. That's a pretty steep line. Okay, so let's go back up here. So at when x was 2 along this function right here, the slope, right here. Let me just erase this. It's getting kind of busy. The slope is 28 or 28 over 1 right there. Now, this has all kinds of uh, tremendously powerful applications to it. Um, I just can't even tell you how powerful uh, the first derivative is in so many different applications in math, science, business, etc., etc. Just take my word for it, okay? Um, and if you understand uh, everything so far, well, then you're understanding a huge part of what calculus is and the importance of algebra in it, okay, because we are talking about the slope. All right, so what I just showed you right here is the easy way. This is the way we would actually uh, do this in a, um, like an algebra course, but 
we still need to figure out this problem right here. So what is this? Well, this is when you first learn the uh, first derivative, okay? Uh, it's really basically described to us as calculating the slope. Now, again, I'm gonna do this in a separate video to fully explain this difference uh, quotient, but effectively, what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be finding the rise over the run. This is just a fancy version of the slope formula that you are learned, uh, that you have learned, excuse me, or are learning, in algebra, that's all this is. Now the notation is different, but effectively this is all this is. All right, so uh, for this particular problem, okay, we're gonna use this formula to calculate the first derivative. Now we already know the answer is 14x, okay, because we just, I'm sorry, uh, yes, 14x. That was the first derivative, but we're going to uh, calculate this the long way using our awesome algebra uh, skills. All right, so what is our function, okay? We're gonna need a few things here, right? We need to know what f of x is. Well, f of x is seven x squared. We, uh, we're already given that, that's our parabola. But I need to figure out what f of x plus h is, all right? So f of x plus h, okay, means that I have to plug in x plus h, uh, I gotta replace this x with x plus h. So really what I'm gonna be doing I need to find out what seven times x plus h squared is. So this is where a lot of our algebra skills are gonna come in. So we gotta figure this out to get this part of the problem. And then here we have h. I'm gonna explain this part here. Don't be afraid of this crazy notation. This is just what we call a limit. As h goes to zero, this is super easy. Don't worry about that. We'll, we'll talk about that at the end. But what we gotta first do is figure this out. We know what that is. We gotta do all this algebra to simplify this. So if you think you could do this, I would certainly you know, see where you're at with your algebra skills. Go ahead and calculate that, plug it in right there, and then plug this in right there, have that over H, clean this up, and get this as simple as you can, and then we'll talk about how to get the final answer. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this now. And let's go ahead and do this part, right? So this is uh, seven times um, x plus h squared. This is our f of x plus h, remember? Okay, we have to calculate that. So x plus h squared is x plus h times x plus h. And when we use the FOIL technique, we're just basic algebra, this times this times this times that, we are going to get all of this, okay? Then I can clean this up. That's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared times seven. And then when I do use the distributor property, I can multiply all this by seven. I get seven x squared plus 14 x h plus seven h squared, okay? So this is one part of the um, uh, formula that we need. And then the other part is f of x, right? So f of x is just equal to seven x squared. So again, all I could do now, or all I need to do is plug in uh, for f of x plus h, I'm gonna plug this in and for f of x, I'm gonna plug this in to the formula and we're going to simplify. So let's see that now. Okay, so here we go. So f of x plus h, we just calculated, it's this. We know what f of x is, it's this. And then we're gonna write that over h and I'll talk about this at the end. Well, let's just do um, our algebra uh, here to clean this up. So we have negative 7x squared, that takes out this positive 7x squared. So I'm just left with this, 14xh uh, plus 7h squared, okay, right there over h. All right, it's looking pretty good now. You know, it's like, oh, this is much simpler. Uh, so right here, we uh, can factor out a greatest common factor. So we got seven, we've got 14, so I can factor out a seven, and I have h and h squared, so I can factor out a 7h, okay, and I'm left with 2x plus h over h. And now I can go ahead and cross cancel this H with this H. So I'm left with this formula right here. I'm left with this expression actually. Um, seven times two X plus H. This is the formula almost, okay, of the first derivative. Okay, we're almost there. So we used our algebra skills to simplify all this down. Now we gotta talk about this limit uh, part of the problem. All right, so what we've done so far is we're finding the first derivative, we found the, we're finding the, the limit of h goes to zero of all this algebra right here, and we did all this algebra and it came out to be seven times two x plus h. So what does this limit business mean, okay? Well, 
basically means if uh, what will this be equal to right here if we let h go um, uh, infinitely uh, close to zero okay and the way we figure that out is to literally replace this h with a zero so <laughs> what's this going to be equal to when h gets very very close to zero well we, all we're going to do is just replace this h with a zero and that will tell us the answer so that's just going to be zero when i plug in zero for h so this is just going to be seven times two x and seven times two x the last i checked was 14x and this is the first derivative okay the first derivative of our function so remember our function f of x was equal to 7x squared okay we already calculated the first derivative it is 14x remember we just did that the easy way 2 times 7 14 times x minus 1 but here we used the concept of the difference quotient which is effectively finding the slope and limits this is basic calculus if you understand everything i have done so far you have literally understand like 50 percent of what goes on a calculus course so in calculus let me just draw this a little bit better okay and this would be like calculus one or ap calculus so half of a calculus course i'm just just very very in a very general way you really get into the study of, de of derivatives okay uh, uh f prime all that kind of good stuff and then the other half is integration all this crazy stuff like the little symbols like this all right so we have integration and we have differentiation that's what we call this but what we just did right here is an example of differentiation okay well, we need the derivative and first derivative and you can see here that i didn't do anything fancy okay i just used algebra okay and we solved a pretty cool problem so again if you have any intentions to you know uh, take higher level mathematics if you're going for any kind of college degree don't discount or don't be like oh i won't have to take calculus you never know there's a lot of majors out there uh fields of study that you'll have to take some basic calculus even like one semester of business calculus so like business majors finance majors and stuff accounting majors yeah you'll you can very easily end up having taken calculus but it's not beyond what you're doing and that's why it's so important to really learn you know uh your algebra skills okay and keep building all this stuff up because they will come uh, into play big time as you study a course like calculus all right so hopefully you found this uh video interesting and if that was the case please consider smashing that like button and if you're new to my youtube channel hopefully you'll consider uh subscribing been on youtube for 10 plus years have over a thousand plus videos in uh, basic to advanced mathematics my goal is to try to make math clear and understandable and try to show you the connections too between advanced math and more basic math okay so if you like my teaching style i have a ton of stuff on my channel that can help you out and of course i'm posting new stuff all the time but my best math help will be within my math help program okay so with that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day